How's it going everyone? Welcome to the setup video for the 2020-2021 fireworks show. If you're just looking to watch the show, I will leave that link below in the comments. This is going to not only include the show, but it's going to go over all the setup that I'm doing, all the different nuances, my thought process, that sort of stuff. And this year is going to be a lot better than years past because I have a firing system and some legit MJG Firewire initiators. So we're going to have quite the New Year's and it's not New Year's yet. It is actually Christmas Eve. I figured there's no better way to celebrate Christmas than by testing out the new firing system. So we're just waiting for it to get dark out and then we're going to set off a couple shells and see how this thing performs. So I know you can't see anything besides three lights, but those are the three modules corresponding with the three shells. Let's get up to the top and test these guys out. Here's the firing order. Little Evil, a Red String Unleash the Beast, and a Magnus Dictator uh, Brocade to Green with Purple Strobe. Starting off with the Little Evil. And it lit. Oh, that was cute. Okay. Next up, number five, Red String, Unleash the Beast. Another lit. Oh, that was a killer shell. And last, but certainly not least, number nine, Magnus Dictator, Brocade to Purple with Green Strobe. Here we go. Failure to fire, of course. Well, we're just doing this one the old fashioned way. Hell yeah. <laughs> so it's December 27th, we're a little bit closer to New Year's, and I just finished putting together my first ever mortar rack. And as you can see, it's not just any mortar rack, but it's a fan rack. It'll hold 24 tubes, these DR11 tubes. I don't remember exactly where I got them, but they're pretty cheap and simple. It's just DR11 plugged with wood. The rack I made out of two by fours. The angle on them is somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees. I didn't really measure it. I just kind of guesstimated with each of them, but it looks like I did all right. And yes, there is some space from side to side where the tubes go, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't see them hopping out of here. I mean, you can see how low they sit. So I think we're going to be fine. It's just a pretty simple and pretty easy way to make a nice mortar rack. So I'm really looking forward to using this thing. And now that all this is done, we get to go inside and go over all the fireworks we're going to be lighting off. So if you don't want to see this part, I will put a timestamp that you could skip to so that if you want to be surprised watching the show, you can skip to that point and you won't see any of the fireworks that are going to be displayed. But without any further ado, let's get inside and start talking about the fireworks. So we're back inside and these are the three positions. Position one, position two, and position three. Position one is going to be on the far right. Position two is going to be on the far left. And position three, which is all the shells, is going to be in between the two. Now I'm going to stagger these boards because you can see the two redneckers. That's going to be our false finale. But going through the firing order, we got Christmas Eve, Red Cloud, Crazy Horse, Crazy Horse and Red Cloud together. Then we're going to do six ball shells, just kind of slow fused. Then we're going to be moving over to Tailgater, Blue Heaven, the two redneckers, and then all the shells in here. We got 13 ball shells and 11 canister shells. And I'm gonna stagger each row, ball can, ball can. And my whole goal with this is to paint the sky. I wanna have shells and color from top to bottom and I think this is gonna accomplish it. And here are the shells that we're gonna be using in the shell portion of the finale. Now I'm gonna be running all of the different effects across the ones that are labeled at least. We have almost an entire box of the Unleashed the Beast shells. Those aren't labeled, so I'm just going to put the string color. Then we have a mix of Magnus Dictator, uh, Fight for Independence from Raccoon, and a couple more of the Black Cat artillery shells. And again, I want to have a really nice painted sky top to bottom, as much as I can get at least. And I think this combo is going to be really, really nice. 
And the keen dive viewers amongst you might have noticed that we have two different types of initiators here. One of them is the traditional one that goes inside the lift, and one of them is the type that goes over the fuse. This is the type that we had fail in our initial test, and I think the reason why is I was using electrical tape, and electrical tape just isn't the best for fireworks. It wasn't sticking very well, and when I initially lit it, I watched it light and just drop immediately off the fuse. So my theory is that this acted as like a little mini rocket almost, pushing it off the fuse. So I'm hoping that with a little bit of good tape, some of this Dave's magic tape, we shouldn't have any of those problems. So the ones that we're gonna be going directly into the lift is Crazy Horse and Red Cloud, which are both going off together at the same time, as well as the two Redneckers. The rest, we're gonna to try to use the initiators that go over the fuse. Hopefully they work. If they don't, you will see it in this video. So this is gonna be a good test of both styles from someone that is new to both and is trying them out for the first time. Well, it's about 3.30 and I've started dropping the shells and I forgot to film an intro for that, but we're dropping all these canister shells plus the ball shells into the fan rack. And the order that we're gonna be going, if you couldn't tell, ball can, ball can, on and on and on, till the back row where we have a ball shell in the center and two can shells on the side. The reason I'm doing that is because I have 13 ball shells and 11 canister shells, which equals 24 mortar shells to be filled in these tubes. And we're gonna be using this fast artillery fuse, four to five seconds a foot, to fuse all these together. And the reason I'm using this fuse as opposed to something faster is I kind of want a rolling explosion, if that makes sense. I want the first couple rows to pop off before the last is even close to shooting off. I want it to be boom, 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 row after row after row. And I think this is gonna do it. We'll see, I'm kind of guessing. But I'm gonna start dropping the can shells in because as you can see, we got all the ball shells already in there. Let's go. There we go, all the shells are dropped. They are all fused. And yes, I do realize now that the two sides will go off later than the center, but I think it's gonna be such a short delay that it's not gonna be noticeable. And you can see that I just used some of the Dave's magic tape on each one of the fuse connections. I think it'll work just fine. And then I left this little tail end here so that I can connect it to the igniter. I am gonna cover all the tubes with some more tape just in case because we're gonna have a lot of fireworks going off this year. And I wanna make sure that this goes last and not prematurely. So we now have both boards down here. We're gonna start wiring everything up. I don't have any of the modules down here because I'm not setting those up until the very last minute. I'm not placing these boards until the very last minute because we're not having the most favorable weather out here, ladies and gentlemen. I know you can't tell, but it is sprinkling a little bit. And typically that wouldn't be a problem for these fireworks, but with the Chinese firing system, I just don't trust it. I'll hand light it if I have to, but I would much prefer to use the firing system. We'll see. Well, besides the mortar rack, we are all wired up. And I know it looks like a rat's nest, and that's because it is. But thankfully, I only have a couple cues, and as you may see, we are all labeled. So I don't have to do any guesswork. I just plug it straight into the queue, and we are good. So I'm going to wire that one up, and then we're going to set these guys out. Hopefully, the weather holds. So we got all three positions placed, T minus roughly eh, 10 minutes or so. This is gonna be sweet. All of the modules are armed. We are showing continuity. We got a lot of competition. Let's kiss 2020 goodbye, ladies and gentlemen. Up on the porch, it's a little overcast, slight mist. And we are about to arm the system here in a second. Gonna get the drone up. Let's hope this all goes well. It's gonna be fun either way. All right, we're going to arm the system. Nothing is launched yet. Let's see how this goes. Hopefully I remember the firing order. First one's lit, let's go. One's lit. Oh, that 
that one didn't fire. Let's see. Yeah, it's working. All right, hopefully the next one lit. Yeah. delayed but that's all right and the mortar's lit let's go goodbye 2020 Goodbye 2020, hello 2021. <laughs> well, two and a half minutes later, all of it's over. But I'll tell you what, that was a shitload of fun. <laughs> so thankfully we had no misfires. The only issue that we did have was with the two redneckers trying to press two buttons at the same time on the cheap module just didn't work. But thankfully I think it was still pretty damn awesome. A couple of the ball shells, I could tell that they weren't leaving the tubes all that well, but that was pretty perfect. I couldn't have asked for much better than that. Hope you enjoyed, ladies and gentlemen. See you in 2021. Thank you for watching. Think for yourself. Shoot straight, and I will see you next time.